If bloodthirsty clowns, shape-shifting monsters, demonic vampires, unhinged serial killers, and sinister creatures are your thing, then you have come to the right place. The creations of Stephen King's mind are truly the stuff of nightmares, which makes your skin crawl and send a chill down your spine. Pennywise perfectly summed up the creepily rewarding world of Stephen King when it said, I'm every nightmare you've ever had. I'm your worst dream come true. In this video, we will explore some of the most unnerving and gratifying television adaptations of Stephen King's writings. That should be on your must-watch list. So pull over your blanket and grab the popcorn because we are about to begin this scare fest. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you and let's begin. Father, of the little boy she killed. The Outsider, 2020. First, we have the 10-episode miniseries The Outsider, which premiered on HBO in 2020, two years after King's novel came out. The Outsider begins as a gritty police procedural and gradually plunges into the dark world of the supernatural with a mysterious monster at the epicenter. When a brutally mutilated body of a young boy, Frankie Peterson, is found in the woods of Cherokee City, Georgia, small-town detective Ralph Anderson, played by Ben Mendelsohn, begins the hunt for the murderer. Meanwhile, several eyewitnesses claim to have seen the local football coach and school teacher, Terry Maitland, played by Jason Bateman, in a blood-spattered state near the crime scene, which is soon backed by video footage and strong evidence. Terry, who also used to coach Anderson's now-deceased son, is arrested at a Little League game, but continues to maintain he is innocent, his alibi being he was not in town. Terry's wife and lawyer soon gather irrefutable evidence that Terry was in fact speaking at a teaching conference in another state on the fateful day. The conflicting evidence makes Anderson suspect something eerie is afoot, and he brings in the uncanny, intuitive private investigator, Holly Gibney, brilliantly portrayed by Cynthia Erivo, who completely steals the show. A human being cannot exist in two realities at the same time is the haunting realization that leads Holly to theorize about an ominous, shape-shifting creature dwelling in a cave, feeding on children, referring to El Coco, a boogeyman. While a defiant Anderson, who has no tolerance for the unexplainable, stresses on plain facts and evidence, Holly's unorthodox ways of uncovering the mystery lead to the discovery that supernatural forces have crossed into the human world. Holly Gibney's character proves an outsider knows an outsider. The Outsider is a slow burn horror masterpiece with the dark and eerie small town aesthetic adding to its spine chilling charm. Castle Rock, 2018 to 2019. Next, we have Castle Rock, the two-season show which premiered on Hulu in 2018. If the name rings a bell, that's because Castle Rock is the fictional town in Maine which has frequently been the setting of Stephen King's creations such as The Shawshank Redemption, Needful Things, Cujo, The Body, and The Dark Half, among others. The show Castle Rock is a Stephen King multiverse where many of his characters cross paths to create exceptional dread and tension. The first season leads to the discovery of a strange prisoner locked in a bunker at Shawshank State Prison who they call The Kid. Bill Skarsgård, the horrifying clown Pennywise from 2017's It movie, returns in this J.J. Abrams and Stephen King collaboration as The Kid, who refuses to divulge details about how he ended up at the penitentiary and only utters the name Henry Matthew Deaver. Henry, played by Andre Holland, left Castle Rock after being involved in the death of his father as a suspect and returns to discover some sinister truth. Truths. Henry's mother's battle with dementia also unearths that the town's ominous past is written in blood. The second season unfurls around the deranged Annie Wilkes from King's novel Misery. Portrayed by Lizzie Kaplan, Stephen King's nurse from hell, Annie, is on the run with her daughter Joy and lands up in Castle Rock. Her arrival rattles the town with eerie happenings and intensifies a clash between warring clans. Annie's paranoia and killing spree led to the discovery of a dark cult which has existed within the labyrinths of the town for centuries. The cult hypnotizes the people of Castle Rock to create a mindless army. Castle Rock is the perfect TV series mashup of King's iconic characters.
Mr. Mercedes 2017 to 2019. Stephen King's Bill Hodges trilogy, set in the fictional town of Bridgeton, Ohio, and comprising Mr. Mercedes, Finders Keepers, and End of Watch, converge into the brilliant three-season show of Mr. Mercedes, which premiered in 2017. Divorced from his wife and estranged from his only daughter, disgruntled detective Bill Hodges is frustrated over the unsolved case of Mr. Mercedes even after retirement. Meanwhile, the titular psychopath serial killer also seems displeased at not having been apprehended and missing out on his moment of fame. The mysterious killer is actually Brady Hartsfield, who works as a computer handyman and pretends to have that would-never-hurt-a-fly persona. Brady secretly earns his killer title when the media dubs him as Mr. Mercedes after he rammed a stolen Mercedes at a queue of job seekers at an early morning fair, killing 16, including a kid, and injuring very many. With Brady hacking into Bill Hodge's mail, begins a never-ending cat-and-mouse chase between the the stubborn detective and the unhinged killer, who continues to commit random acts of violence in town. The crime show takes a supernatural turn with Brady mind-controlling people and killing his victims even when in a coma. Brendan Gleeson is captivating as grizzled detective Bill Hodges, equally matched by Harry Treadaway as the spine-chilling Mr. Mercedes. Stephen King also appears in a brief cameo, interestingly, as a dead man, with a knife sticking out his back. He was, after all, one of the victims of Mr. Mercedes in the killer's dream. The show Mr. Mercedes focuses on the aftermath of the murderous tragedy from the perspective of everyone involved, including the perpetrator, and also portrays the horrors of having a deranged killer on the loose. Eleven twenty-two sixty-three, two thousand and sixteen. Another Stephen King and J.J. Abrams collab is the fascinating show Eleven Twenty-Two Sixty-Three, an adaptation of King's two thousand and eleven novel. The title is the fateful date on which former U.S. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. An ordinary school teacher, Jake Epping, played by James Franco, is introduced to a time-traveling portal at the back of his friend's diner, one that only allows travel from the present day to October nineteen-sixties. Dying of King Cancer, Jake's friend Al Templeton, played by Chris Cooper, entrusts him with the task of preventing the assassination of Kennedy by traveling back in time to the 60s. Engulfed by disbelief but still willing to try, Jake lands up in the past only to find gory accidents and King's signature horror elements trying to warn him every step of the way because the past has already detected him as an intruder and is resisting his attempts of changing it. Jake is horrified when a blood-stained, dying woman tells him, you shouldn't be here. A young librarian, Seda Dunhill, captivatingly portrayed by Sarah Gaydon, gets entangled in Jake's mission. Their romance turns out to be a tragic love story that transcends time. After the success of his mission, Jake travels back to 2016, only to find it devastated by war, which further prompts him to return to 1960 and undo the things he did. The bright cinematography of the eight-episode series and Jake's constant internal conflict make the show entirely believable. It's a lot to wrap your head around, and that's the charm of Steve Stephen King. Premiered on Hulu in 2016, 11 63 remains somewhat underrated when it should be at the top of your watch list. The Stand 1994. Believably the best Stephen King adaptation in the 90s, The Stand earned six Emmy nominations, winning two of them. 1994's The Stand won over King's fans by remaining intricately faithful to the 1978 novel with help from King himself, who wrote the screenplay. When a weaponized virus, secretly formulated by the government, gets accidentally released, a panicked soldier attempts to flee the government laboratory with his family, bringing the virus from California to Texas. Despite the government's efforts to cover up their mishap and contain the plague, it quickly transforms into a pandemic and wipes out more than 99% of the world's population. In the post-apocalyptic world, the remaining survivors grapple to lead a life of panic and misery when they start getting strange dreams of contrasting figures. While one set of survivors arrives in Nebraska to be led by the prophetic mother Abigail, another group gets summoned by one of King's most epic villains, Randall Flagg, aka the Dark Man. As Mother Abigail dies, her followers are left to deal with Randall alone, a devilish entity, who has set up a tyrannical regime in Las Vegas and can control his followers to carry out his evil deeds. The battle between good and evil ends with a nuclear explosion, supposedly killing Flag, with the survivors becoming immune to the virus. Another adaptation of The Stand was released in 2020 with Whoopi Goldberg as Mother Abigail and Alexander Skarsgård as Randall Flagg. 
It, 1990. The 1990s miniseries adaptation of It, Stephen King's 1986 horror novel, was the stuff of nightmares for kids. The 2017 film adaptation of It may have been on a superior scale, but the 90s show will always remain iconic, thanks to Tim Curry's menacing performance as the titular shape-shifting monster who resurfaces in the town of Derry, Maine every 30 years to satiate its bloodthirst by feeding on kids. The monster, who usually takes the shape of a terrifying clown, Pennywise hypnotizes its victims with its dead lights and taps into their deepest fears. On a rainy day, little George plays on the streets of Derry with a paper boat when it floats into a drain with Pennywise peeping out of it. Pennywise bites his arm off, leaving him to bleed to death without anyone knowing how George really died. Meanwhile, the Losers Club, a band of seven schoolgoers, including George's brother Bill, discovers the myth of Pennywise from a project scrapbook and faces off against the monster in the sewers, forcing it to retreat. 30 years later, Pennywise signals his return to Derry, marking its first kill, when the losers assemble again to finish off the demonic shapeshifter once and for all. Tim Curry's Smile Gone Bad role of a clown who is both beguiling and murderous was famously played by Bill Skarsgård later in the films, earning the approval of his predecessor. Remaining faithful to King's novel, it really is a bone-chilling blend of childhood nostalgia and one's worst fears. The Dead Zone, 2002 to 2007. Stephen King's 1979 novel, The Dead Zone, inspired both the movie and a six season series which ran from 2002 to 2007 before coming to an abrupt cliffhanging end. The series diverted from the novel's storyline but incorporated characters from it, most notably the psychic protagonist Johnny Smith, brilliantly portrayed by Anthony Michael Hall. Following a car accident, small town teacher Johnny goes into a coma for six years. Once he regains consciousness, he develops the ability to see the past or the future by touching objects and people. When experiencing a vision triggered by touch, Johnny can rewind, slow down, fast forward, and even freeze situations, enabling not only him, but also the viewers to examine an event in great detail. Doctors theorize that his visions are a result of a dead zone getting activated in his brain as compensation for the portions that were affected in the accident. In order to help people avoid disastrous futures or recover from a traumatic past or prevent gruesome crime, Times, Johnny joins forces with the local sheriff, Walt Bannerman, who is now married to Johnny's former fiance. While the duo starts off on a rocky note, Johnny proves to be an asset to Walt in solving crimes. Johnny's psychic ability turns out to be both a boon and a curse as he struggles to live in the present while his mind wanders too much in the past and the future. While aiding the law enforcement team, Johnny is also plagued by visions of an apocalyptic future brought on by a politician's chaotic whims, which Johnny attempts to thwart. The Dead Zone comes highly recommended for anyone who loves a blend of drama and sci-fi sprinkled with King's horror elements. Under the Dome, 2013 to 2015. With Spielberg as a producer, Under the Dome kicked off on a record-breaking note when it premiered on CBS in 2013, running across 39 episodes till 2015. Under the Dome significantly modified its storyline from King's 2009 novel, but retaining most of the characters from it and incorporating some combined ones. As the name suggests, Under the Dome conveys a sense of suffocating dread and anxiety, and it all begins when the small town of Chester's Mill is suddenly cut off from the rest of the world by a gigantic, impenetrable dome. When the mysterious, transparent structure descends on Chester's Mill, the townspeople struggle to go on with their lives, with limited resources bringing out the worst in them, thus highlighting the book's thematic concerns over diminishing resources. As used car salesman Big Jim attempts to gain control of the situation, the main characters start operating with hidden agendas, with no one being able to trust each other. Eventually, a sinister organization's involvement reveals that the entrapment is the doing of an invading alien species that attempts to take over Earth as their new habitat by infecting humans and converting them into their kind. By the end of the show, the dome begins to deteriorate and before it turns to stone, everyone must escape the spherical confinement to avoid a claustrophobic fate, including the aliens. It's a must watch for those who love alien mysteries with a little bit of small town melodrama. 
Nightmares and Dreamscapes, and the stories of Stephen King 2006. The 2006 anthology series Nightmares and Dreamscapes from the stories of Stephen King is an eight-episode scarefest, each part being an adaptation of King's short stories. While most of the adaptations are from King's 1993 collection Nightmares and Dreamscapes, the pilot episode Battleground is from his first short story compilation Night Shift, and a few others from his 2002 collection Everything's Eventual. Battleground is one of the most striking episodes from the anthology, which stars William Hunt as a professional assassin who is attacked by an army of toy soldiers after he kills the toy company's CEO. In the road virus heads north, a horror writer is haunted by his new art acquisition, a sinister painting that comes to life. Autopsy Room 4 has the protagonist witness his own autopsy live after he goes into a catatonic state from a snakebite but is assumed dead. In Crouch End, a newlywed couple's plans go awry when they realize their honeymoon destination is a sinister gateway to another dimension. In Umni's Last Case, an author, played by William H. Macy, grieving the death of his son, attempts to trade places with the tough and cynical detective of his own story. In You Know They Got a Hell of a Band, a carefree young couple encounters ghosts of rock and roll legends, while in the fifth quarter, a released convict risks his life by embarking on a dangerous bounty hunt. The end of the whole mess, as a famous filmmaker, played by Ron Livingston, in his dying moments, recall how his brother experiment to end world violence went horribly wrong. A brilliant cast for each episode and visually stunning set designs add to the nightmarish charm of the anthology, which does absolute justice to the creations of Stephen King's mind. Haven 2010 to 2015. Another thrilling show on our list is Haven, which is loosely based on Stephen King's 2005 novel, The Colorado Kid. The action takes place in the fictional town of Haven, Maine, which appears to be a fine place to raise a family, but turns out to be full of ungodly things. When shrewd FBI agent Audrey Parker, played by Emily Rose, arrives in Haven to investigate the case of a prison escape, she finds it difficult to ignore the uncanny happenings in the town, leading to the revelation that Haven is often consumed by a plague of supernatural afflictions called the Troubles, which triggers the town's people's dormant supernatural abilities. Audrey eventually quits the FBI to join Haven's law enforcement department and discovers that she has a past connection with the town that may lead to the identity of her mysterious mother. While Audrey and her detective partner, played by Lucas Bryant, try to save the town from the supernatural occurrences and its people from the Troubles, it leads her to question whether her memories are her own and theorize that her arrival in Haven may have been pre-planned. The five-season show, which ran between 2010 and 2015, frequently refers to elements from the Stephen King universe, such as one of the characters in Haven has just come out of the Shawshank prison, while another, troubled by the plague, takes the form of his victim's biggest fears, even turning into a clown once, which is a reference to Pennywise the Clown. Full of secrets and King-esque terrors, Haven comes highly recommended for horror fans. Salem's Lot, 1979. Salem's Lot was the first Stephen King creation that was adapted for television, filmed by none other than the Texas Chainsaw Massacre director Toby Hooper, who went on to become one of the most influential horror filmmakers of all time. The two-part miniseries, released in 1979, achieved a cult status and set the vampire horror genre benchmark quite high for years to come. Salem's Lot centers around a successful writer, Ben Mears, who returns to his hometown after many years to write a book about a haunted house in Salem's Salem's Lot. The house is now owned by another newcomer in town, a mysterious Richard Straker. The arrival of a parcel at Richard's newly acquired mansion leads to the death and disappearance of several townspeople, with the eventual revelation that an ancient vampire named Kurt Barlow is Richard's new guest who arrived in the crate. Barlow has been converting the townspeople into vampires, prompting Ben and a horror movie buff Mark Petrie to enter the haunted mansion and destroy Barlow by piercing his heart with a stake. Ben and Mark leave the house burning in the hope that the remaining vampires will perish, but years after they flee Salem's Lot together, they continue to be chased by vampires. The most significant alteration that the show Salem's Lot made from the source material was changing the polished, human-like Kurt Barlow of the novel into a nightmarish fang vampire who didn't speak. Salem's Lot was the ultimate fusion of a vampire scarefest and a haunted house thriller, which paved the way for many modern horror gems. 
The Mist, 2017. 2017 miniseries The Mist is a reimagining of Stephen King's 1980 horror novella and an unnerving thriller spanning across 10 episodes. The Mist stays away from overtly gory and explicit horror and instead implements a sense of atmospheric terror with its cinematography and, of course, a Stephen King inspired storyline. When a panicked soldier wakes up in the woods of Bridgeville, Maine, and runs into town with an ominous warning, he is believed to be intoxicated and locked up. But his prediction, turns out to be creepily true when a mysterious mist engulfs the entire town, reducing the visibility to zero. Stepping out becomes a dangerous feat, trapping groups of townspeople in a mall, a church, and a hospital. Those who dared to step out died gruesome deaths brought on by anomalies and unexplained phenomena emerging from the mist, bringing everyone to the haunting realization that there's something in the mist. A cryptic woman on the run theorizes that Mother Nature has had enough and has sent a black spring to restore order. The characters eventually start seeing apparitions in the mist from their past representing guilt or fear which either led to their death or aid their survival. The characters get their own twisted stories which add to the overall sense of paranoia. The mist's eerie charm lies in the fact that the horror slowly creeps up under your skin and continues to linger long after the show is over. Marvelous Verdict. There it is folks, our list of 12 must-watch Stephen King TV adaptations that are guaranteed to give you sleepless nights. How many from the list have you watched, and which ones are your favorite picks for sleepovers with friends? Tell us in the comments below. If you love this video, please give us a shout out and watch this space for more marvelous content. And one last thing, don't forget to sleep with the lights on tonight.